Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Motorcyclist dies after crashing into wall on Washington Boulevard. A 46-year-old motorcyclist died after crashing into a wall along Washington Boulevard in Kingston. The deceased has been identified as Ricardo Huggins of a Cowell Avenue address in Kingston 20. Reports are that about 5.15 p.m. on Tuesday, Huggins was riding his motorcycle along Washington Boulevard when lost control and collided with a wall. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Two of Westmoreland's wanted men surrendered charged. Two of Westmoreland's wanted men who turned themselves in on Wednesday have been charged. The men have been identified as Nicholas Eva Rubin of Dexter Street and Odin Baggy Cooper from Wharf Road, Smithfield, in the parish. Both men were featured on the Police Wanted Wednesday publication on social media. Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations for the Westmoreland Police Division, Adrian Hamilton, told reporters that both men surrendered with their attorneys. Ruben turned himself in with his attorney and was charged for murder. He is now in police custody along with another wanted person, Odin Cooper, the lawman confirmed. Cooper was charged for wounding with intent. DSP Hamilton is appealing to the remaining 14 people on the wanted list to turn themselves in. They are wanted for serious crimes and will be going out at them non-stop. They should turn themselves in and family and friends should not harbor them, Hamilton stated. Olympic Gardens Family Homeless After Suspected Arson Attack A family has been left homeless after a reported arson attack yesterday morning along the Balmagate Avenue in Olympic Garden, St. Andrew. There are no reports of injuries. Reporters understand that no one was home at the time of the fire. It is reported that a neighbor saw smoke coming from the three-bedroom house and alerted the police. Firefighters responded and conducted a cooling down operation. Investigations are ongoing. Meanwhile, the police are maintaining a strong presence in the community. It is reported that yesterday morning's incident came after three consecutive nights of heavy gunfire in the area. Warring fractions in the area have been at odds. 10 of 13 people held in West Kingston gunfire released. 10 of 13 people who were detained by police following a seizure of two illegal firearms in Denham Town, West Kingston on Saturday have been released. The police say three men remain in custody for more questioning and possible charges. The 13, which included 11 men and 2 women, were held after the guns Glock 9mm and Ataros.45 were found during an operation in the community. The police had reported that the joint police military operation was carried out between the hours of 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. along Bent Lane. During the operation, 14 premises, which included 40 dwellings, were searched. The firearms were recovered in an abandoned building at 9 Bentley Lane. The Glock pistol was found with a magazine containing nine rounds of ammunition and the Taurus pistol which had six rounds, the police stated. Probe launched into neglect and unprofessional conduct claims against St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital. The North East Regional Health Authority says an investigation has been launched into a complaint about neglect and unprofessional conduct by a patient who was admitted to the female medical ward at the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital. The individual shared the experience at the hospital in a post on Facebook. The authority says it is deeply concerned about the circumstances shared in the post and sought to assure the public that the experience highlighted is not in keeping with its customer service standards. It says appropriate action will be taken upon completion of the investigation which is being undertaken by the hospital. The authority is encouraging members of the public to contact the entity when there is a complaint or concern. Complaints and concerns can be emailed to complaints at nerha.gov.jm. Persons may also contact the Customer Service Department at St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital at 876-972-2272-3. Toots' former manager wins copyright case against Reggae Icons Estate. Pebble Stevenson the former manager of Tootsie Bird has won a significant victory against the estate of the late reggae icon in the Supreme Court regarding the intellectual copyright ownership of an album created by a cult roots reggae artist, Joe Plyon. 
The case revolved around the authorship and ownership of the musical works, the unlawful detention of a hard drive, which said works. The case also sought to establish whether Tootsiebert Estate had an interest in the right to sound recording in question. I have regained access to my hard drive with my masters. I have established clearly, now that I am the executive producer, a Jubilant Caleb Stevenson told reporters. The ownership of the album became a bone of contention in the wake of Scott and Reggae legend Heber's untimely death on September 11, 2020, from complications developed after battling with COVID-19. Hebert had played a key role in producing and composing the Joe Plan album just before his death. His vocals do not appear on the project. Stevens sought legal redress to regain access to the hard drive, which had been confiscated by the Hebert estate. A landmark case has been established in terms of copyright law, in terms of ownership and composition. We are getting in line with international standards. In my experience, we have been working with a lot of people overseas who have no confidence in our judicial system in terms of copyright and want us to sign contracts based on US law, UK law and French law, or have arbitration with international tribunals, Stevenson added. This now proves we can rely on our courts in Jamaica to establish true ownership and give justified decisions in our courts, he said. The court ordered the defendants, which included Doreen Hibbert, the widow of Toots Hibbert, to deliver the hard drive to the claimant. The defendants also required to pay the legal costs incurred by the claimant. The issue of damages will proceed to an assessment of damages in open court. There will be no tolerance to illegal vending in Water Square Falmouth, Mayor warns. Mayor of Falmouth and Chairman of the Trelawney Municipal Corporation, Councillor C. Junior Gajon, has issued a stern warning that, with the assistance of the police, the Municipal Corporation will remove vendors who peddled their goods in the historic Water Square in Falmouth. In a response to concerns raised from the flood during the recent Mayor's Forum at the Falmouth Town Hall, Gajon revealed that plans are afoot that the Municipal Corporation will be undertaking a drive to eradicate illegal vending in the town centre. He disclosed that only food vendors are permitted to do business in the space provided for them in the town. Apart from the food vendors, all those that are now seen in the town will have to sell in the market. There will be no tolerance approach to illegal vending in Water Square, Gager insisted. Plans are well advanced to mount a statue of the iconic sprinter Usain Bolt in Water Square in the nearby future. Mother cries, father says justice not done. The cries of Serena Russell, mother of 24-year-old Chantel White, who was shot dead by her lover and co-worker Andre Bromfield in 2019, echoed outside the Manchester Circuit Court on Tuesday immediately after he was sentenced to 18 years and 5 months in prison for manslaughter. So wicked, Mr. God not sleep. Russell was obviously disgusted by a sentence she considered to be too light, repeat five times. Chantel's father, Alton White, chimed in expressing his displeasure with the sentencing of his daughter's killer. Where is the justice? Everybody said the killing. He said in reference to the footage which surfaced of the December 31, 2019 incident in the lunchroom of Master Mark Supermarket, located less than 200 meters from the courthouse on Salt Race Coast Road. If it was a big man trial, it wouldn't be like this. I'm here sitting down and didn't even get the opportunity to go into the court. I didn't even get a say to say something and see to have to be like this, he added. Bromfield, 32, a former delivery supervisor of nine years, had pleaded guilty to manslaughter in a plea deal on May 16. He had initially been charged with illegal possession of firearm and murder. He pleaded not guilty to those charges. The murder charge was later reduced to manslaughter after he indicated in a caution statement that he had been provoked by White. White, who was employed as an inventory clerk at the supermarket, was reported in a lunchroom with co-workers when Bromfield shot her in the face with his license firearm. In his social inquiry report, read in court, it was disclosed that he and White had been in an intimate relationship for a year, which he claimed he tried to end, stating that it was not fair to his wife, but that he would always return. He claimed that he felt disrespected after utterances by White and seen her in the company of another co-worker on New Year's Eve. The court was told that he claimed that he built a two-bedroom house for White and took care of her financially.
the report said Bromfield expressed remorse for killing White. If money could bring her back to life, he would spend every dime to bring her back, read a part of the social inquiry report. The statement was backed by his attorney, Norman Godfrey, who also asked for leniency in the sentencing of his client. Godfrey said, there needs to be re-socialization of young people who have no regard for each other in relationships, with one seeing the other as an object of pleasure, while the other party is seen as a resource. Justice Lorna Shelley Williams, in handing down the sentence, said she found that the evidence against the accused was overwhelming, having happened in front of a co-worker and the utterances Bromfield made to the police in handing over his firearm. Men no what come over me. Me take up this girl and give her everything, build her two-bedroom house, pay off all her credit card, and realize she have another man. Me see the youth a kiss kiss her up, me talk to her and she had dissed me up, and me just snap, Bromfield said in the report. Justice Williams said she'd taken into consideration that any large sentence discount would shut the public's conscience. Bromfield was granted a 10% discount from a sentence of 25 years, bringing it down to 22 years and 7 months, then further reduced by one year based on an antecedent report and another year based on the social inquiry report to 20 years and 10 months. Bromfield, having spent two years and five months in custody, was sentenced by Justice Williams to 18 years and five months. The victim's angry father insisted that justice was not done. My reaction is that I'm not pleased about this whole situation. There is no justice there. Rendering fall in a fall upon one man house stop. Remember that. Life is one big road with a lot of signs, he stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.